My name is Shumi Mahashram and this is our midterm project, Automatic Irrigation System for EE201 Introduction to Digital Electronics course. My name is CJ Turner and we have created an automated greenhouse irrigation system. Our project is intended to automate greenhouse soil maintenance and increase overall efficiency by reducing unnecessary run time. For system controls, we have a total of six inputs. We have a master on switch, input A, that can be shut off by the operator seasonally or when work inside the greenhouse is being performed. For safety, we also monitor the personnel door switch, input B, to prevent turning on the irrigation system while workers or customers are inside the greenhouse. We constantly monitor soil moisture, input D, atmospheric humidity inside the greenhouse, input E, as well as keep track of the last time the irrigation system was on, input F to maximize efficiency. As with any real world system, there will be failures or faults throughout time. In the event of a suspected leaking or clogged sprinkler heads, we have implemented a diagnostic on feature, input C. When enabled, the diagnostic on mode will allow us to force the irrigation system on and physically monitor the hardware components. The system requires that input A, the master switch, is high and input C, diagnostic mode, is also high before allowing the diagnostic mode to activate. In this scenario, all other inputs are disregarded and the irrigation system will be turned on to allow diagnostics. After establishing the design idea and thinking through the necessary hardware inputs, we were then able to start to formulate a true table. Specific input combinations result in the system on stage shown in green under column Y in the far left graphic. After the truth table was completed, we had a full set of midterms which have been strung together in SOP form shown at the top of the slide. You can also see the list of midterms in numeric form at the bottom of the slide. As you can see, with this many terms, this equation is a bit complex to start building a circuit with. To help simplify the design of the circuit, we utilize the K-map. Each mean term was mapped out according to its system state using a 1 or 0. We were then able to put the central prime implicates resulting in a much simpler algebraic expression, which is y equals ac plus ab df. In this slide, we're looking at the block diagram and construction of the physical circuit. After talking through our intended design and desired input combinations that would lead to the system being on, our next step was to sketch out a block diagram. The first configuration shown in the bottom right photo was promising, but I found that when inputs A and B were high, the irrigation system would be on. This did not align with the intended operation of the system. Moving the leg of an XOR gate coming from the not logic gates from inputs D and F to input A resolve this issue. When following the logic path of the XOR gate circuits, you can see that one input to the XOR gate comes through an inverter. Following the intended operation, we know that input A, the master on switch, should be high in any scenario leading to the irrigation system coming on. Using the NOT gate allows us to invert this high signal from the A input, satisfying the exclusive OR gate logic allowing the gates to look for a high from either the D or F input while seeing the inverted signal from the A input. You'll see that I had a couple different physical renditions of the circuit. The first, I mapped the digital outputs uh, from right to left. So zero was A, one was B, two C, and so on and so forth. But that didn't necessarily match uh, the visual that you get from the truth table. The truth table, uh, my variables were ordered from left to right. So to, to match that, this is my second rendition of the circuit. And I have A mapped to 5, B to 4, C to 3, and so on and so forth. So to prove out that the circuit matches the intended truth table, uh, let's hit run here. Well, we, I, can, I can simulate that the master on switch, so A is high, and we'll just do the diagnostic switch. So say we had an issue in the greenhouse and we wanted to diagnose uh, a hardware fault. So master switch on, diagnostic switch on, and you can see that the LED came on. So in this instance, the irrigation system would be on. 
Uh, and you, you, you can see that we can change any of the other inputs, but we're disregarding those statuses, right? If A and C are high, and to prove out that the irrigation system would work after monitoring the, what would be A, master on switch, B, door switch, uh, C is our diagnostic switch, so we're gonna skip that. And we go to D, which is our moisture sensor in the soil. And then we also look to make sure that it's been greater than one hour since the last on event. So if, the, if that variable is satisfied, F goes high, and you can see the LED coming on, our irrigation system is on. Um, we, we could switch C on and off, of course it doesn't matter. Uh, and then E on and off. But as long as we satisfy master on, door switch, soil moisture, and our timer, our irrigation system will come on. Uh, I'll kind of spare you the, the boring part, but if we were to go through the entire truth table, you will see that the outputs from the physical circuit match what is shown in the truth table.